Welcome to Breezing with Beerman, the podcast, part of the Princetonian Now Media Group. As always, our aim is to inform, educate, entertain, and tell you, my people, what is trending. Please listen to Breezing with Beerman, the podcast on Apple, SoundCloud, Spotify, soon to be on YouTube, and probably New Pod City in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, today, I'm, I'm quite excited. Our first science guest. Our guest is a Princeton native, a law and prep school teacher who has traveled the globe in his quest for biodiversity. He's led expeditions from Maine to Ecuador, and recently this biodiversity savant has published The Definitive Guide to Cuban Plants, one of my favorite countries. I went to Cuba. Please welcome my friend, Princeton High grad too. We've been a little provincial, John Clark. Thank you for being on. All right, thanks for having me, Adam. It's good to be here. I like the way you look too. I like Jacques Cousteau <laughs> with the blue glasses. Maybe that's just the lighting. Hope, hope your family it's, fun. it's my COVID look. Okay, you're COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very morbid, but I like it. Um, first of all, I'm jealous. You have a job I've always wanted. Travel, see the world, do your thing. I'm not, plants I don't know much about. I forgot to buy my wife plants for her anniversary. A rose, I was reminded. That's why I thought about you, actually. Okay. But um, <laughs> hope the family's well. Now, growing up in our town, Princeton, New Jersey, for those who don't know, Central New Jersey, what inspired you to become a topical um, a a topical, a tropical botanist. You know, I remember you playing baseball. I didn't know about you and plants. Oh, so, well, I, I think uh, growing up in Princeton, um, you know, I went to Princeton High School like you, Adam, and um, it was just one of those places where you grew up here and you just, people went everywhere. Yeah. It, I, and so, I, you know, I look around at my classmates from Princeton High School and I'm just amazed at where everyone ended up. Right. And so, um, you know, I don't know what it was, but um, no, I actually I do know I, I was really inspired by um, being in nature. Um, I grew up. My father had um, some property out in the Sourland Mountains. We spent a lot of time camping there during the weekends. <clears throat> um, we spent a lot of summers in Maine in remote areas, enjoying the wilderness. So it was sort of those experiences growing up with my dad, being outside and enjoying nature. Um, when I sat down at the end of um, uh, nearing the end of my my uh, my high school degree at Princeton High, I was looking at the University of Vermont and I saw this box that you could check for studying forestry. And I said, oh, that sounds like a great major. I'm gonna study forestry. Just and like that, I, well, that sounds good. Check it, go for it. Um, you know, I didn't have the typical college interview experience. Like I, I didn't, when I went up to, to, to UVM and visited the school, my visit wasn't that inspiring, but it just, looking at that as an option as something that I could study I just fell in love with the idea. And then the other thing that happened was I applied for American Field Service. And I knew really early on that I wanted a gap year. It wasn't very well, What's typical. that for those who don't know? Oh, American, American. Field Service. So, um, you know, it, it, it's more typical now, but back in the 80s, taking a year off between high school and college to sort of explore some other something, it wasn't that common, but I, I knew that's something that I wanted to do. I had never been, um, I had never traveled abroad. And, um, and the idea of living in another country before I went to college was something that, that I wanted to do. And, and so I ended up applying and I put down um, Ecuador as my first choice for American uh -huh. Field Service. That's um, how that started, the Ecuador connection. Okay. Yes, I went, <laughs> went to, I, I, I spent a year in a public high school in Southern Ecuador. Oh and, my God. Really? Um, still, yeah, still, I'm still connected with the family. I, I, I got really into photography too. Like I took, I just digitized all my images from then. I was about a thousand images back. I just have to interject. The girls must have loved you, blonde hair, blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually anyway. dating my wife back then. I never dated oh. any Ecuadorians. I'm still, and I married you were dating her. You know, I, married, I was oh. dating Savannah back then. I mean, we, we weren't together the whole time, but like wow. we were together before I went to Ecuador. I was with her during that time. And so, um, mm -hmm. so, so anyway, I, I, I went to Ecuador and then, um, and then spent a year there. Um, Really enjoyed meeting other Ecuadorians from that part of the of Ecuador who also. What town were you outside. in? But was it were you down in Tumbes, Rumba? I, I was, in, I was in a little town called Cuenca. I I go to Cuenca all the time. <laughs> so I know we yeah. have this connection because you, yeah, you married, I, I you married an Ecuadorian, right? Yeah, I married an Ecuadorian, but I would, I had I had a, a, a um 
uh, eureka moment in the avenue of miracles. And I had stomach pain. I went to pray at one of those shrines because I couldn't hurt, and the pain stopped. It was bizarre. But anyway, really? okay. I, I could, yeah, well, I'm taking you off. We're talking about women, marriage, and, and miracles. But yeah, that no. did happen in, in, in Cuenca. And a lot of Ecuadorians from Cuenca are now living, coming up to Heights Town. But anyway, continue. So did you go to the rainforest? Did you go to the Galapagos? Did you do any of that I, stuff? I did, I did some trips, but mostly I was just, I, I was completely immersed and engaged in, in sort of the, in Cuenca and, and, and making friends. And, and, and those friends, the, the ones that I connected with were the ones who liked being outside. Right. It was like cool, cool because I was like a high school student, but I was hanging out with like 20 year olds. Right. And every weekend we, we were going to El Cajas, we were hiking. It was like Disney World to you and the rides were all there and for free basically, <laughs> it sounds like. Is that a good analogy? It was so much fun. I mean, I just can't like, I can't advocate it enough. You know, if you get the experience or the opportunity for those of you who are in high school out there, right? Take a gap year and go somewhere, live abroad. Yeah, I'm not, I oh, I believe tough it. With, but yeah no, but I mean, so it was great. And so then I went to college, I got my degree in forestry and then I applied for the Peace Corps. Wow. And the Peace Corps, I was, it was almost like I, I got to know two different sides of Ecuador because in, in, when I was living as a high school student in Ecuador, I was in sort of in the city, but going out and spending the weekends in, in wilderness areas. Well, in Peace Corps, they, they sent me way out there. <laughs> oh, but they, you asked for Ecuador and they kept you there. Yeah, yeah, I spoke Spanish. Yeah. I had the, the degree in forestry. So right. they, 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 they try to match you with a place where you're gonna laugh. Where were you in the Oriente or, or the Amazon or, or, or like in? I went to a remote rainforest, but not on the Amazon side. I went to the oh. western, the western side, so, so right. sort of near Colombia and on the Pacific side. Oh, I know. That. Yeah, that's where the that's where pe they also sneak in illegal drugs and human trafficking too. <laughs> that's no, part, no, no, that's no, no, no. I, it's a little far. Well, okay. So back then, you now things have changed politically right. with the border in Colombia, but there was some of that near the border border but where we were it's it's way isolated from that part of, of what so was that no like though you're 19 and i know but still you're kind of like robinson caruso in the rainforest you're kind of adrift i mean did you have friends what did you do or it was just pure science and and, and love of botany plants I mean, plants. It was like, <laughs> it was just so one amazing. word plastic no botanist. Plant. this is the thing there's no botanist that ever really been there i mean Al, this guy al gentry went there and like i i idealize al gentry he's like my hero and i went and met people who knew al gentry and i went to areas where he worked um, he's like this super superstar of botany or something he is but he's dead like he died oh, in a plane crash. not anymore i mean dead. unfortunately <laughs> nobody it was a very tragic plane crash that happened in 1993. Oh, i have to look him up okay yeah so um but he did a lot as like, a, he was only, he passed away. He was like 45 years old, early forties, but he had done so much for, for tropical botany and biodiversity. And so I just, I went down there. I, I worked on establishing a, a new reserve that wow. was, um, that was run by the Hatun Sacha Foundation. And At 19 years old. You're basically no, no, 18 No, I was a Peace Corps volunteer. So oh, I'm, okay. I'm, 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 I'm with a four year old. Oh, after college. college. Okay. Right. So right. yeah. So I was, I was, I was like, what, 20, 22, 23. Still impressive. Impressive. But so it was great, I, and I was part of a. I was I was the second generation of Peace Corps volunteers involved with this project, and we went out there and 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 with another Peace Corps volunteer, we homesteaded this area in the middle of a of a really remarkable rainforest, and then I collected plants. We got a grant from the National Geographic Society, in collaboration with the National Herbarium of Ecuador, um, Hatun Sacha Foundation, and we just we we, we discovered. I don't know, over anything named john clark science. after you anything named john the clark <laughs> there's a there's a tree there's a tree there's a nerve there's a shrub there's a few things we found right. a lot of really interesting things and so and then from there it's just like I, grad school marriage um kids i don't know like, just like, we're back in princeton <laughs> i'm back in princeton yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. you want me to i read some literature that you are that you and your students have published about your research in latin america what is expedition-based learning? Or is that a self-evident phrase there? Exhibition-based learning. Expedition, yeah, so I, I, I refer to that <clears throat> a lot because I, I, what I'm trying to do, um, so I, and I feel like I'm on my third career right now. I spent 10 years at the University of Alabama um, where I was um, tenured in the, in the biology department at the University of Alabama and then transitioned back to Princeton. So um, my wife and I, we grew up here together. We went to high school together. 
Yeah. And uh, we wanted to, to be here close to family. So we, we recently transitioned back to, to Princeton. I remember asking her, do you go to football games? And she was like, eh. Anyway. Oh, yeah, the Crimson <laughs> Tide. It's still like huge fans of the, the, the Crimson Oh, yeah, you asked. Right, 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 right. But anyway, Dreaming, go on. I'm yeah. sorry. I, interu I interrupt. No, no. So anyway, so we we, uh, uh, we came back <laughs> here. And, and one of the things that, um, that I really like about working at the Lawrenceville School is that we can really engage the students in doing some very hands-on things. And so um, until COVID, we were going to Cuba, we were going to Ecuador, right, and we were doing that. the same sort of expedition style research that I would do in my 20s or in my 30s or my 40s when I was at the University of Alabama. I, I, I brought that, um, that sort of program and that way of doing research and that way of engaging in, in conservation to the students at Lawrenceville, at the Lawrenceville School, and it's been great. So, uh, you know, I, I think that the, the, the way to really engage with nature is to, is to be out there, right, um, is to document the flora and, um, and, and provide that documentation to a broader audience. Um, and so, and so we, we incorporate a lot of what we do in the field with, with things that we can do in the lab. Right. Isn't it difficult? Not difficult, but you're taking young people who you're in charge with. How do you organize, implement, and hold, hold them accountable? I mean, how does that work, especially during COVID? Well, so all right, so with COVID, it's a little different. I, I have to that's a, I have to give a different answer on COVID. Things have to totally changed. This time okay. last year, in, we we were supposed to be in the Ecuadorian rainforest this time wow. last year, and and we canceled that trip. You know, we were going to go, and then and then five hours later, we canceled. And I mean, it those was the poor right kids. Decision. They must have been so you were excited, but you know, those kids must have been sky high, and then boom. It was tough. You yeah. know, it's been it's been really difficult. Um, so what's your question again? Oh, my question was, you have the, but you have, still have these students, Lawrenceville students. I'm assuming they're into the subject. You wouldn't bring them. But what are the logistics um, okay. of, of you know yeah. organizing and and exp and holding it accountable? Like this is still a job. It's learning, but it's a job. You have to f do certain things. You know, from safety protocols, from research protocols, from getting along yeah. protocols. So I, I mean, I work with great students, and um, and they're physically fit. They're um, okay. That's important. Okay. They, they love the intellectual challenge and they love the cultural part of, uh, of being in Ecuador or Cuba. And, and those are the same things that I like. like and they're I team players. They have to be team players too, right? Yeah, great team players. You know, right. it's, 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 it's part of being a Laurentian. And, um, and, and I've found that um, sort of the, the, the things that you worry about with, with, with students in the field is like what they do in their free time, right? right. Free time should not be given out. That's the long term <laughs> practical, no free time. That's the danger. <laughs> So the thing is, we're completely in the middle of nowhere the whole time. So we take out all those risk factors, you know. Um, there's there. So we we are we pretty much go from the plane right to a hotel to a bus, and then we're in the middle of the rainforest. And 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 what I like about it is, I get to choose a different spot every single year. So we go to areas. Lucky year, that's fine. I mean, that's great. <laughs> Destination. <laughs> Look up. Where do I want to go to next? <laughs> no, but we, so we go to areas that are biologically fascinating, right. Right. and we work with the partners that um, and and the research uh, relationships that I developed um, in my previous my previous position, um, even dating back to when I was a Peace Corps volunteer. That's what well, Lawrenceville brought you in because of that too. You you had a very extensive background and, and impressive. Well, I mean, I, yeah, yeah, maybe. I mean, they I, I, they they brought me in and and um and um and and uh, it, partly. For that and then also i mean i really like to teach and and i like to to bring these sorts of experiences to the students right. and to the community at lawrenceville and, and it's not always like the students who are, who want to do science sometimes you know you, you get a student who who hasn't done a whole lot of science and they go on a trip like that and boom it just it's it change your life transformative. yeah, yeah. It really you, you they'll remember you forever i mean basically well, we'll see. <laughs> i mean I, what i like what i like about it is i get to teach the classes that i never get to, not that i never got to take in high school gotcha Right, like if I could have taken some of the classes that I teach now, it, for me, I know it would have been transformative. So I sort of think about that right. um, when I'm when I'm teaching the classes or when I'm developing a course. Yeah. So what about COVID though? I mean, that's the current trending problem. How are you dealing with that? What are you planning for next in 2021? Or so with with the COVID thing, we're, we're doing more lab-based stuff. So one of the things we do is we we study plants that we've documented in the field or that I've documented in the past, and then we extract the DNA and then we try to figure out like who's related to who, because a lot of the plants that we, we, we've we worked on are not represented in many of the databases like GenBank or in recent peer reviewed literature. So we always have things 
that we might not know where they belong, like who they're closely related to. Right. And so we get to do original research. Um, now with COVID, um, some of that is, is a bit more complicated, but we can, we can still do the analyses. We still have access to, to, to plant tissue samples that aren't represented in, in other, other labs or, mm -hmm. or well represented in the literature. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, the one good thing about <clears throat> what we can do, I guess, with COVID is we can still like go out and look at nature. So every right. year we have an annual bio blitz. Last year we had over 200 people involved with that. This year I anticipate the same sort of enthusiasm. And so what that entails is going outside and documenting flora and fauna with your iPhone. <clears throat> and it's great because we get lots of students involved with that and it gets students like off their their um, their video gaming and into the field. Yeah, I mean, I mean, walking around. I think we, you Homo sapiens need nature, and they, they need the light, they need the interaction. Video games, uh, anything to extremes is it's bad for myopia to mental health. I, I applaud you. Can we get to questions from voices from the crowd? I call it. I ask random Princetonians questions they might want to ask you. Some you might not be even able to answer, but you want to try. Sure. Little game we play. Well, here's one. <laughs> person's a little paranoid. Um, John asks, are you an intelligence asset like Mormons? You know, Mormons travel the world, go to missionaries. So he, I guess he's saying, do you have a, do, you were in Cuba recently. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, which is still a communist country somewhat closed. Um, you weren't doing any spying when you were there, were you? No, I mean, how did the Cubans, how was it like working with the Cubans? It's great. Uh, I mean, so it was totally, they were totally open to you. You could look, go, go any place, say anything. So no, I mean, it's complicated working in Cuba. Um, I would say that, um, I, and I haven't been there since 2019. Okay, so, um, what was it 20? Yes, yeah, so 2019, I, I was going almost every year, sometimes twice a year. Uh, so um, no, working there has been, has been great. Um, I, 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 I try to stay out of the politics as much as possible. Right, okay, and, science, and try, you're, not, you're not debating. Stay on, the, stay on the science, you know, I, I recently, um, I've worked with Lawrenceville students, and I brought some horticulturalists to Cuba, and we, we've we've documented those trips with um, with publications about what we saw, and and I I take out all all images of Castro and, and about the revolution, and just focus right. on the plants. Right. So that's, you're not, you're not here goal. to debate Miami politics either, and Cuba and all that stuff. Gotcha. Um, yeah, yeah. What about you've done some again definitive guide to Cuban plants? What society, What kind of expectations do you put on yourself? Here's a question: Does it do you feel it's put on you, or do you put on yourself? Are you hard on yourself and what you expect to do, what you want to accomplish? Um. I say that uh, you know I, I want to do projects that um, that are um, that that promote the biodiversity of whatever region, and especially places where the biodiversity isn't well understood or it's underrepresented. And um, and and I guess the Cuba thing was 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 special because my PhD advisor Larry Skog from the Smithsonian Institution, wow, he did his PhD on Caribbean Gesneriaceae, this group of plants that I work on, but he never got to go to Cuba. And uh, when I was working at the University of Alabama, where I was for, for, for almost 10 years, uh, the dean, um, the dean of, of, of arts and sciences was developing programs in Cuba. And so I often went with the dean, assisted the dean, and helped with whatever I could. And then at the tail end of those trips, I would, I would work on, on the botany stuff. And, um, and so that's sort of how, how that project evolved and developed. And um, and and part of that was you know going to Haiti like that was that was a really exciting wow, part of the trip because yeah, to right. really understand Cuban and Caribbean plants you have to you have to incorporate Haiti and some of the other Caribbean islands but holistically like, right right it was it was amazing was like a lot of things there you know people hadn't seen for or documented right documented with images or or barium specimens that's that's you know, bizarre in, the, in this world there. with so much information and cameras every place it's still amazing to just from researching you there's still a lot we don't know. Takes, here's the cool thing is like it's it's changing like people engaging on iNaturalist with digital images or how specimens from museums are are available through JSTOR plants like that whole world has opened up how we do biodiversity research interesting I mean like it's amazing I'm working on this uh, stamp project trying to identify Gesneriads on stamps Right. And in the process of doing that, we, we found an image of, of, a, of a, one of these plants on a postage stamp in, in, in India. And it was, it was misidentified. And we were able to figure out the correct identification. And it ended up being this species, Mishmiensis, that 
that had never been properly identified. And it, it involved collaboration with someone who was on the editorial committee for the floor of India. And, and we were able to do this through some images that were posted on iNaturalist. Yeah, in real time, totally the whole amazing. world. That's yeah. a paradigm shift. Final question, and then you can give give me um, websites people can go to and say any else you mm -hmm. want to you want to talk about or promote. Um, climate, okay, this is from a person, or a minister. Climate catastrophe, biodiversity. Are you pessimistic? What's going on? It's a very general question. I'm sure you can't answer. So it here's the thing: I, I teach honors environmental science, and I I, I think climate change. And I think carbon sequestration, I think these are like the big issues for, for, for the next generation. It's a threat, um, it's an extra, extra stential, I can't say the word threat though, right? It is a threat. I, I think it's a huge threat. And, and here, here's the thing, the way I look at it for like biodiversity wise, like what I can do is I can, I can document species accurately and provide information about them. And I think that will be useful for future generations. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like where I see my role, and 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 I I, I really enjoy engaging students and other people in, in that in that in that process. Um, but yes, I'm I am like very concerned about climate, and I think it's a fact. I think it's a fact that we have to embrace and understand, and um and and it's and it's something that I that I I I teach regularly in my classes. Is it something that that I like have solutions for? Not I mean like I make personal decisions, but but I, but I feel like one of the things that I enjoy doing and that I can do well and effectively is is document the, the plants and sort of share that passion with other people. Because right. I think yeah. this is what I think. I think and this is when, I, when I teach, if, you, if people could connect to what they see, like if you can identify the, the, the 10 or 20 wildflowers in your front yard, it just makes you that closer to nature. Yeah, so sort of like uh, that's true. Life. You start thinking about it and then you see the, uh, how things connect and everything and how it affects your life. Well, John Clark, I want to thank you very much. Please take about 30 seconds or more if you need website, anything else you want to say before we, it's been a, fa a very fascinating interview. But. Well, thanks. Thanks, Adam. So I, I would say that, um, you know, iNaturalist has been great. If, you're, if, you want to, if you want to engage in, in understanding the flora and fauna in your backyard or, or on nature walks, Go outside and document stuff. Get involved in, in iNaturalist. I think it's quite really great through like BioBlitz. Okay. Um, as far as like websites, <clears throat> like I don't I don't have a website anymore. I used to, but um, uh, I don't really have anything on that. But I, you know, I I, I just when, when things open up, you know, after COVID, you know, it, for sure, you know, if if you if you're planning a vacation, you know, orient it around something that's nature, right? I think that's great. That's a good thought. Um, and then the other thing is, like, for those of you who are in, in Princeton, you know, vi visit, like, the DNR Greenway. Like, one of the cool things about, about being from Princeton is, like, there are all these natural areas that didn't exist when I grew up here. Like, we have trails all over the place. We That's have true. all this open space. Like, it's so amazing to live in a community that's enlightened and has some of these areas where you can visit. Right. So, for sure, go out in those places. And you know the the most important thing I I would say is you know stay healthy and stay safe stay stay safe right I mean like we all <laughs> sort of get through this you know hopefully vaccinations will work you know we'll return to to a, a normal functioning society where we were last year right. um, and so I would say uh, and and I'm just you know a huge advocate of of, of science um, and and biodiversity so you know it's sort of like my 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 last oh, I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> hopefully we can. I know you. You. you hopefully we. The Beermans can get together with the uh, Nazaro at uh, Clark's or Marquand Park or something. You can point out some some stuff. Yeah, I, and I, I should say this too. We we do have this in common. You know, Adam and I were in Ecuador at the same time. You were uh, you were you were working at Colegio Americano. Americano right? de Quito, yes. Yeah, and and Causing I was trouble. In, <laughs> and I was in Quito that time. I'm like, so we had these like circles that sort of like I know, too bad connected, we were, but yeah. we didn't connect yeah. personally. But personally, I mean, I know right, right, right. it's so great to 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 see you here. I mean, actually, I was with you the the, the um the the night I got offered the position at Lawrenceville. Right, I, think you were there I, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So, I yeah. just remember. I was like, oh my god! And you were ecstatic, and and it was a new, <laughs> like you said, the third career. Well, John Clark, <laughs> let's get together soon. And they got John Clark, biodiversity savant expert. Check him out. Uh, I googled his name. It was fascinating what he's doing in Cuba. And this has been breezing with Berman, the podcast, a Princetonian Now Media Group production. Thank you. Mm -hmm.